I recently got um, some flights in with this FMS Viper 70mm jet uh, using the FreeSky X20S and an Archer SR10 Plus stabilized receiver. Um, it went great. This was my first time using a stabilized receiver. Um, and when I posted this on Facebook, I got a bunch of questions about how to set up the Yaro in the receiver. So I thought I would make a video of the full process. First of all, we need to make sure that we already have a receiver paired to our model. In this case, I've already gone through the binding process. Um, so if we turn on the receiver, we can see we have 2.4 signal. Um, I've also taken care of updating the transmitter to the latest firmware, as well as the receivers. In this case, transmitter is in firmware version 1.413, while the receiver is in version 1.0.9. Now, in terms of programming, I like to start by setting up the two inputs we're going to need to control the Yara. Uh, so to begin with, I'm going to set this S1 pod um, to control the gain of our Yara. So to do that, I'm going to go to Model, Mixer, I'm going to create a new free mix. I'm going to put it at the end. I'm going to call this Yara Gain uh, stores is going to be pod one. Um, so one thing to take into account here is that by default the curve is going to go from minus hundred percent all the way to one hundred percent. However, the Yarrow is expecting us to go from 0 to 100. That means that we need to modify this curve. We can do that pretty easily by modifying the offset, setting it to 50%. Weight up, 50%. And weight down, 50%. Now we have our knob going from 0 to 50, all the way to 100. Now we just need to assign a channel output. In this case, following the manual for this receiver, we see that um, zero gain adjustment is expected in channel 13. So selecting channel 13 asks if uh, we want to name the channel the same as the mixer's name. That sounds good. So now we have zero gain set to channel 13 and it's controlled by the pot S1. The second input we need is going to be a three position switch to control the three modes of the Jaro. Um, and just a reminder, what I'm setting up here is the quick mode, um, which has three modes. Uh, so we're going to add a new free mix. We're going to put it at the end. We're going to name this. Jaro mode source. Let's do this button right here. And in this case, in this case, flight modes is meant to go to channel 14. Now we have those three positions. The next step is the calibration. And this is important to be done before installing the receiver in the plane. Um, this is because you will have to position the receiver in a couple of different orientations. And that will be very difficult to do if assembled in the plane already. For that, we're going to go to settings. Swipe to the right and click on SRX calibration. If you don't see this screen, it means that uh, the Lua script hasn't been installed or hasn't been installed properly. So now it's just a matter of following the steps. Uh, right now we have to place the receiver horizontal, top side up, with the pins on the right side. 
Hold it and click. Now top side down, still with the pins on the right side. And we hold it, stable, click. Now it tells us to put it vertical with the pins up. So for this, I'm going to use the side of the table to avoid the antennas. I'm going to hold it flash, click. And now again, pins vertical, uh, receiver vertical, this time with the pins down. So hold it in place and click. And now we have to put this with the pins on the right. Now we flip this with the pins on the left. And that's the calibration. If you ever get stuck on one of those steps, it says waiting. Um, that means that you haven't placed the receiver in the position it was expecting. So I would just go back and try again, reading carefully the description. By default, stabilization is turned on for all the channels in the receiver. Um, there are basically two banks for stabilization. Bank 1 that covers channels 1 through 6 and bank 2 that covers channels 7 through 11. In my case, I actually want to turn off stabilization for bank number two. That is because I don't want a stabilization on the gear or flaps. So those two I will assign to channels seven and eight, which are part of the bank two. So I'm going to go to SRX stable. I'm going to open. So I'm checking here that bank number one stabilization is enabled. I click. Bank number two, it's already off, so channels seven and up will not have stabilization enabled. That's what we want. Two important notes here. First is to make sure to connect the servos to the ports and the receiver as directed in the manual. So in this case, it's going to be channel one to aileron, channel two to elevator, channel three to throttle, channel four to rudder, and then I will set gear in channel 7 and flaps in channel 8. The second note that is also very important is not to reverse any servo outputs yet. We need to take care of all the setup of the gyro first and then we will deal with uh, reversing servos as needed. At this point I have mounted the receiver in the airplane. Um, I have connected the 6L battery and the servos are connected. The next thing I have to do here is set the mounting type. I want to go to mountain type. In my case is going to be horizontal, but there is four different, different types, horizontal, horizontal reverse, vertical, and vertical reverse. We're going to confirm that uh, the gyro is responding the correct way to the movements in the plane. So we still have this three position button. So that's going to be gyro off. That's going to be stabilization mode, which means that the gyro will try to compensate for disturbances that the wind, for example, cause in the plane. And that's going to be self-level. The gyro will try to level the wings of the plane. Uh, so in this case, I think an easy way to cover it is to put it on self-level. and move the plane on the different axis and confirm that the directions are correct. So in this case, if the airplane banks to the right, the ailerons are going to the left, which is correct. If the airplane pitches up, if the airplane pitches up, the gyro is trying to bring the nose down. If it goes down, the gyro tries to bring it up. And this one is a bit harder to see but basically, if the airplane goes to the left, the gyro tries to bring it to the right and vice versa. Um, if 
either of those directions was incorrect. Um, it's just a matter of going to the SRX stable screen, scroll down, scroll down and reverse the direction of the channel that is going in the opposite direction. So for example, if the Jara was trying to pitch up when the airplane is going up, then we would just inverse that direction. If you find that um, you are not able to get all the movements correctly, even after looking at the direction of the, of the different channels, uh, you might want to double check that the mounting type is set correctly. The last thing we're going to do here is do a self-check. So for that, inside the SRX stable screen, we are going to do self-check, enable. So we're gonna wait a moment, and then we're gonna move all of the surfaces to the extremes. Make sure you do that with the throttle all the way down. And now, in a moment, the Jaro moves all the surfaces to the to the endpoints. So that's the self check. So at this point, pretty much everything related to the Jaro is set up. The final step now is to ensure that the sticks are moving the service in the right orientation. And I can already see that things are not correct. So here, if I go ailerons to the right, the ailerons are moving in the wrong orientation. So now it's the time to go to our output screen and reverse channels as needed. That is correct. Elevators also incorrect. Now we're good. And let's look at rather rather seems correct this time. I also know I want to reduce the endpoints of my ailerons, so I'm gonna go down to eighty five percent on both. And one thing I like to do is anytime I modify the endpoints or reverse any channels is do one more self-check just to make sure that there's nothing weird going on and everything still looks okay. So again, we're going to SRX stable, open. We're going to enable self-check. We're gonna wait a few seconds. And then we're going to move all the surfaces. All while keeping the throttle all the way down. We wait for the gear to make the movements. And we're going to confirm once again that the gear is responding correctly. This is going to be done again in the self-level position. So now we can see again, if airplane pitches up, elevator is trying to bring the nose down. If the airplane goes down, elevator tries to bring it up. Same goes with the ailerons, and same goes with the rudder. And we also want to double check that the other positions are working. So if I go to the middle position here, that should be just stabilization, it means that it will just compensate for little disturbances. So, yeah, when I move, it tries to compensate for a moment and it stops. This one is not trying to self-level the wings, it's just trying to keep the plane a bit more stable during gust of winds. And the final position here is gear off. So right now, nothing should be happening. And we can also confirm here that in the stabilization 
posesión de gain is working as expected. So if we bring, if we bring this all the way down, nothing should be happening. That's 0% gain. If we increase the gain by a little bit, let's say around 25%, we should start seeing some movements. Very small movements, but you can even hear it. And let's say now we go all the way to 100%. Now the corrections are all very obvious. Those are the basics of setting up the stabilized receiver. One optional additional thing I like to do here is to add some voice callouts for the gyro mode and the gain amount so that while I'm in flight I know what's happening without having to look at the transmitter. It's always nice to have that double of feedback so um, I'm going to set up here now, so I'm going to go to special functions, I'm going to add a new one, play track, I'm going to enable it, uh, active condition is going to be bringing the switch all the way up, so this is going to be our self-level mode, so in file we're going to look for something that works well, so for example Self level. Self level. That works pretty well. We're gonna skip this in a startup. Now we're gonna do the same for the other two positions. So play track, enable. It's gonna be for the middle position. And this, I would like to find something that is just stable on. That works for me. Skip. And now we're going to do one more for Jero off. So let's find a track that works. Stabilization off. Stabilization on. Self level. Stabilization on. Stabilization on. That works pretty well. For the position of the pod, it's a bit trickier, um, but not that bad. We're going to add a new logic switch. We're going to call this pod trigger. And what we want here is a delta that is greater than value. Source is going to be our gain pod. Spot number one, value is going to be just one. And we want to change the delay before inactive to a bit greater. So let's do 0.2 seconds. And you can see how when I move the knob a little bit, it activates. And once I release, it activates. So now we're going to add a new special function. Action is going to be play value. Enable. Active condition, we're going to use the logic switch that we just created. Now the value, what we're going to use here is not the pod, but actually the channel value, because the pod would go from minus 100 to 100. What we actually want is the value we're passing to the the gyro gain, and that's going to come straight from channel 13, which is the gyro gain. And what we want to do here is invert this one. 100, 50%, 50%, 10%, 2%, 74%, 62%, 23%, 1%. There we go. We have the gain values. Call out. 